moments in this facility. Tonight, they're going to be racing into a semifinal clash with their arch rivals, the Terrapins of Maryland, who have payback in mind as these third seeds want another shot at number one. Highpoint.com Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey, is the host venue for the Big Ten Men's Lacrosse Tournament. This evening, the Maryland Terrapins prepare to engage once more in this sport's greatest rivalry when they meet second seeded Johns Hopkins, the same Blue Jays who beat them six days ago. College Lacrosse on BTN. The tournament bracket is brought to you by Meyer. The Nittany Lions have advanced to Saturday's championship game. Grant Ament was a scoring hero for Penn State in their win earlier today. They'll be facing the victor of Johns Hopkins and Maryland. A very pleasant welcome to you. Along with Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. The Blue Jays and the Terrapins, they love to face each other. But, Mark, how do they approach the game differently tonight? Well, if you're Maryland, you're still trying to play for a top eight seed. They're still in position to have a home game in the NCAA tournament. Plus, you're a run off your own field in a rivalry game. For Johns Hopkins, I love the do-or-die attitude. Backs against the wall, they came out approach last week. I think they need to incorporate that same mindset in this one here tonight. The Blue Jays have a ton of offensive weapons, not the least of which is a Joey Epstein at attack, a fabulous freshman. Unanimous first team, all Big Ten selection, Big Ten freshman of the year. We're going to show three goals from last week. Perhaps no better shooter with a low angle coming around the crease than Joey Epstein. He did it from the left-hand side. Let's watch him do it from the right. And he uses the goal as a pick as welding the defender for Maryland gets tripped up. And then when he gets... The defense hung up. You're afraid of him front swinging? He finds Connor D. Simone right on the doorstep. Joey Epstein having a terrific freshman campaign for the Blue Jays. Oh, he's something special. It's time for us to put some details on the Spider starting goalies. Maryland goes with Danny Dolan, the transfer from UMass, who's made himself right at home in the Terrapin crease with 11 wins this year. Johns Hopkins is going to counter with Ryan Darby. The sophomore from Texas, who is credited with only two stops in the victory over Maryland Saturday, they're going to need a whole lot more than that this time around. Yeah, there's no question. Ryan Darby in this Hopkins defense. The defense he played unselfish a week ago. Maryland only generated 21 shots. They're going to look to compete better at the faceoff dot and generate more quality scoring opportunities. Doug Donovan, Bob Ritchie, and Jason McGinn will officiate tonight. Maryland in the all-black. Johns Hopkins wearing the white 11 and 3 Terrapins, 7 and 6 Blue Jays, all for you with college lacrosse on BTN. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon from highpoint.com stadium in Piscataway. Well, and right away we're seeing oh some physical lacrosse, but it's Shockey versus Naruski on the opening face-off for each respective club. Punch counter punch throughout the night six days ago with different face-off guys having different uh, and varying amounts of success. As we settle into the first six on six, the winner of this one gets Penn State. The Nittany Lions cruising past host Rutgers earlier today on BTN by an 18 6 margin. Connor D. Simone on the flip for Marr. Marr finds Joey Epstein, freshman from Bethesda, Maryland. Hesitates here, tries to swim past Puglisi, the short stick D midfielder, who trades him off to Brozowski. John Tillman said they expected Johns Hopkins to go through long, extended possessions. Make a play, make Maryland play a lot of defense, look for nice quality looks. And you can see the quick slide on Joey Epstein. We didn't see that last week. We are seeing it on his first attempt going to the cage, albeit on a shorty, very fast slide. D. Simone working in against Alex Smith. Shot clock at 10. D. Simone, who scored a goal last week, hit a crossbar as well. Dave Petromala said he played a fine game. Three seconds to shoot. Epstein's wild one-handed wrap shot goes wide. And a sturdy defensive effort for Maryland to start the night. Great description, very buttoned up, and a unit that was incredibly disorganized or looked to be disorganized a week ago. That is a terrific start for the men in black. John Tillman, nine seasons as the bench boss in College Park. It's amazing how time flies, right? It's really been eight years since he took over from Dave Cottle. 
This clearing attempt fails for Maryland. Jones ahead to Epstein. Blue Jays will settle it in, get some subs in. Given a second chance right off the bat inside the game's first two and a half minutes. Uh, and that's again something we typically don't see out of Maryland. We saw it plenty last Saturday night in Maryland Stadium. Just drops and bad passes. Maryland is typically one of the most fundamental teams in college lacrosse. And that is another uncharacteristic turnover for the, for the Terrapins. Not the start from offense to defense that they would want. Baskins shimmies past Smith and fires and Dolan is right there at the end of the line for the Terps with his initial stop of the contest Danny Dolan made 13 saves in the loss back on Saturday We'll see again Maryland only 21 shots and a lot of high bouncers against Ryan Darby who is on the shorter side of Division One goaltenders. We'll see if and when Maryland does get scoring chances if they incorporate that same shot philosophy. Dubik back behind the cage. He's guarded there step by step from Owen Colwell. And as we look to lift the lid on the scoring in this second semifinal, Blue Jays and Terps are scoreless. Better than three minutes in. Bubba Fairman, who had five in the losing effort, is out there. Wisnowskis plays it back behind the goal for Bernhardt. Hesitates, gets bumped by Darby as he had the defender Foley hung up. Then Foley made a nice intercept of the pass. Foley played his best game of the season a week ago. Second team all Big Ten in 2019 after being first team in 2018. I think he is playing with a much greater sense of urgency knowing that his career is coming to an end in a couple weeks. Evan Zinn moves it. Keeping it on the outside, they'll switch it. This one's bounced wide of the goal by Danny Jones, the short stick D midfielder. Jones, who scored earlier in the season against Mount St. Mary's. Back behind the cage, the towering presence of Cole Williams. Williams, who scored five times in the Big Ten tournament title game last year against Maryland. D. Simone off this trade off around the screen. D. Simone slings it. That's easy pickings for Dolan. Well, Dolan, two clean saves, albeit both have been to his stick side and not with a ton of velocity, but he's seeing the ball well in a stadium that is a neutral site. That's a good sign for the Maryland Terrapins. Kiermonte trades it off. High scoring Logan Wisnowskis was picked up there on the outside by Jack Rapine. Maryland to this point without a shot, almost five minutes deep. Will Snyder wears five in the black. He's ready to go. Snyder, who was the hero of the regular season game a year ago that went three overtimes, the longest ever in this storied rivalry. Bernhardt against Foley. Comes back on that question mark. Nothing there. DeMeo gets underneath, sent it wide of the goal. Handled by Hubler from the Blue Jays, and he'll race for safety. Good defense by the Blue Jays. They collapsed on DeMeo, who I thought was going to get a shot off, but a, a pretty trail check. DeMeo had his head down. He was going for the goal. Three white jerseys collapsed on him. If he has his head up a little bit, he could have slotted that over to Bernhardt. But nonetheless, good defense by both teams to start out this second semifinal contest. The winner of the opener was Penn State convincingly over Rutgers, 18-6. A game that was 3-2 after 15 minutes, and then the Nittany Lions went crazy to dispose of the tournament hosts. Baskin, who has goals in two straight, works with it below the goal line. Epstein being shut off by a short stick D-mini, or he was being shut off by Smith. This is a matchup Hopkins would like to exploit. Epstein on the bounce shot. Dolan makes the save. The rebound squirts loose. Corley looking to come up with it. Mekar is there. And they're going to award the ball to Maryland. Nice save by Dolan. But how about Brett Mekar with the ground ball on the rebound? In that first game, Joe, we saw, what, three or four rebound goals by Penn State where Edelman makes a save and then that ball just sits in front of the crease. Maycar did a great job of locating it, picking it up, 
He got pushed, but even if that ball would have gone out of bounds, you can reset your defense off the sideline. Maryland only three more seconds to clear it, and they do get it over the midline to Russell Massey. Massey, who scored against Hopkins in the losing effort back on Saturday, part of what has been a productive second midfield for John Tillman this season. Yeah, he's really gone to that second midfield. We saw it really develop and come together in that win over Michigan. And these guys are playing just as much as the first line. Zawatski here, goals in two of his last three. Christian Zawatski gets into the alley, attacked by the long stick midfielder, Rob Kuhn. Bernhardt taking a peek. Bernhardt lowers his shoulder, spins back, doesn't pull the trigger. Quick centering pass, Goal! Point blank for Dubik. Lewis Dubik did not get involved in the Maryland offense until late on Saturday. And this is actually good D by Johns Hopkins. They just over pursue the ball. Watch Bernhardt turn, double comes, trail check. But then Dubik sees Owen Caldwell slip over to his left to cover Wisnowskis coming topside. Dubik just fills the open slot, splits two Hopkins defenders, and gets the Terps on the board. Lewis Dubik goals in 12 of his last 13 outings. He didn't get on the board against Johns Hopkins just six days ago. He changes that early storyline. Maryland grabs the lead. Kyle Prouty taking the draw against Justin Shockey. Three in the black for Maryland. Shockey, who scored in both games against the Blue Jays a season ago, both regular season and Big Ten tournament title game, as Johns Hopkins comes up with a ground ball. Jared Reinson with a great check and then the pickup. That's the definition of wing play. When you muck up the faceoff, 50-50 ground ball, staying in an area where you can get your hands free, create a loose ball, and then pick it up and get it out of harm's way. Excellent job by 87 and White. Can Cannon and the Blue Jays looking to not to score this trip? Eight minutes into the opening quarter. Second semifinal of Big Ten tournament action. Connor DeSimone, the sophomore, takes it below the goal line. Swim move put on. Beautiful finish, turning the corner. It's Epstein. We highlighted Joey Epstein, the Big Ten freshman of the year in our open. As you can see, Dave Petramal and Bill Dwan talking about that latest defensive sequence for the Blue Jays. Short stick, Epstein's gonna go to the rack, and you gotta have a slide ready. Jack Weldy, you can see him saying, I needed to go, but I needed to make sure we were communicating. And again, perhaps no one better in the conference than when he gets topside, those low angle shots. High to high past Danny Dolan. Big goal for the freshman. 31 points in the last seven outings for Joey Epstein. The unanimous choice, as Mark was mentioning, for Big Ten Freshman of the Year has goals in 13 of 14. It's 1-1. As Hopkins comes up with the uh, possession, Evan Zinn, who was uh, running the field at Maryland Stadium back on Saturday, covers a huge amount of ground in no time flat. Top, one of the top recruits, according to Inside Lacrosse, has taken a minute to get into this Hopkins lineup consistently, but as the season has gone on, whereas most freshmen hit a wall, Zinn has continued to develop and evolve and earning more minutes. Keo marching towards the cage, rolls back, feeds it behind the, the net. Epstein again, this time thwarted on his way to the goal by Makar. And freshman on freshman, good defense by Makar. If he, when he turns that corner, just get a stick in his gloves, poke and lift. He's trying to do. Williams on the jump shot. Fought off there by Danny Dolan. Williams was able to get some leverage against the powerful Curtis Corley on the back end for Maryland. Yeah, Dolan looks again. He looks sharp thus far here in the first quarter. I didn't think he was bad on Saturday night. He made 13 saves, as you referenced. It was just extended defensive stands that Hopkins had to make. They got worn down, and they just never seemed to really have any continuity going or consistency on the offensive end. We saw the first team and second team all-conference goalies in this 
original semifinal, the opening game today. Max Edelman of Rutgers, Colby Kinesis of Penn State. Danny Dolan says, hey, don't forget about me. Bernhardt trying to get low on Foley. Jared Bernhardt will distribute. Snyder maneuvers in. Ray Pine forces him away. Shot clock at 25. Fairman attacking from behind the cage. Bubba had five goals back on Saturday. Wisnowskis with some high heat. He sailed it wide. Wisnowskis really was not involved. As a lot of Maryland guys weren't in the second half. He scored a goal as part of Maryland's 5-1 initial lead and then just kind of didn't really have an impact on the game. So look for him to get involved here early. Fairman and Kuhn re-engage. Fairman on the jump shot, sent it wide of Darby. It's backed up by Dubik for Maryland. Late in the shot clock, just four seconds. Dubik on the sprint, quick trigger, score! DeMeo. Maryland scored that goal six on four. That is poor whistle recognition by Johns Hopkins and a lack of preparedness as Hopkins, Maryland ran two midfielders off. It's six on four right here. Feet inside, shoot, goal. Way too easy for the Terps. Lacrosse on BTN is brought to you by T-Mobile. Whether you're home or away, T-Mobile has you covered. And by Vivid Seats, the official resale marketplace of the Big Ten Conference. Download the Vivid Seats app today. Big Ten Tournament champions a season ago. Dave Petromala's Blue Jays were on top. And he, as usual, looks forward to every clash with Maryland. Oh, no doubt. Played in the rivalry. His entire staff has been a part of it as players and now as coaches. He can't be happy. You can see him. Not the, the, the body cues. I mean, they just gave up a goal four on six. You just do not want that to happen uh, when a team is running players off just to basically not give up anything on the defensive end at the end of a shot clock. He mentioned to us he expected Maryland in the black jerseys to be much more hungrier this time around than the squad that fell 16-11 back on Saturday. As we report to the face-off X, DeMeo and Dubik sandwiching goals around an Epstein marker for the Blue Jays. If they're just jumping on board with us this Thursday night, a 2-1 advantage for Maryland. A nice ground ball by Shockey. So we're seeing both backup faceoff men taking the workload right now and Justin Shockey and Danny Naruski for Johns Hopkins and it's been a good battle so far. Massey's back out there with Zawadzki. Terps with Kyle Long wearing 23 in the black. Wisnowskis and Bernhardt. Oh. Potent one-two punch for Maryland. Bernhardt picked up by Foley. Me and my shadow throughout the night for sure. Long fires, he scores! Kyle Long and this second midfield unit for Maryland. They've been getting the job done. An attackman in high school, he's very comfortable with this matchup from X. Actually, he's just going to swing over. There's no need for Danny Jones, number 23 in white, to be on the other side of the goal, backing up Pat Foley against Jared Bernhardt. you got to stay on 23, and a great... It's almost like they're on a string. When Bernhardt pressed goal line extended, he pushed Kyle Long over on the other far pipe. Great catch, shoot, Maryland up by a deuce. Springfield, Pennsylvania's Kyle Long. Springfield High School over 400 points in his high school career. 300 of those were assists. Long calls his own number, makes it a 3-1 advantage for Maryland, and the Terps get the ball right back. Well, and Maryland right now, you can see the confidence and the swagger with the, these couple early goals. Shockey just won that face-off cleanly. This is a team that was really just beaten down for the second half of last weekend's game against Johns Hopkins, and they are back up off the deck, and they've come out swinging. Moving the ball beautifully here for an outside rip that's knocked down. Fairman let it fly. Blue Jays trying to come up with it off the carpet. Darby is there to help from his goal crease. 
It's going to be in a violation against Merrill and a hold of some sort. A little bit of a bailout. Oh, Darby threw a beautiful sky whammy. Nice little face dodge with the, the goalie stick, and he was out of harm's way. But actually, the stoppage in play might be more of a challenge to clear for Hopkins because now Maryland is able to reset. The lights having taken full effect here at highpoint.com stadium. College lacrosse on BTN. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you. We began the day. Sun splashed here in Piscataway. Temperatures were in the 70s, but it's much cooler than that tonight. The wind is still howling. 3-1 Maryland. Blue Jays in the white jerseys with possession. It's DeSimone back behind the net. Goals in his last two outings. Forced back. He'll choose Williams. Williams off the roll dodge. Nice feed inside. Score! Ken Cannon. Blue Jay Bench loves it. John Tillman told us this week that Hopkins, when they put Cole Williams up top, he's a handful. Because if he gets downhill on you with that big left hand, watch out. Not only one slide, but two slides come for the University of Maryland defense. And look at Williams, head up. He's already 6'5", finds Ken Cannon. Great catch, turn, and shoot. Heady play by number 14. Williams gets his 16th assist of the season on Ken Cannon's 16th marker. Scored at uh, even strength there. Had an extra man goal against the Terrapins over the weekend. 3-2 to the faceoff X. Naruski beaten to the punch by Shockey, but the ball comes up for the Blue Jays. It's regained on the sideline by Welding as he tiptoed that sideline. The ball belongs to Johns Hopkins. A terrific job by Naruski. Matt Naruski, the Big Ten Specialist of the Week for his performance in the win over Maryland recently. A wild scramble for another loose ball back behind the Maryland cage. And it comes up for the boys in black. Racing back across. Wozowski will shape it up on the outside. Long range. Sizzler score! Bernhardt. Wasted effort from Naruski, who wins possession and causes a turnover for Maryland. Hopkins then commits their first turnover. Transition. This is early offense. I like how Jared Bernhardt just calmly goes into a slot. This is why you always put the ball down the side behind the goal on a clear, because you get the defenders to turn their heads. And once Bernhardt sees not one, but two defenders in white turn his head, he just goes to the vacated area, takes the feed, and hammers home a nice shot for a post. Jared Bernhardt, who has had multi-goal games in every game this season, with a helper from Dubik. Dubik already has a three-point game going for himself on a goal and two assists. And you might say, because it's Wisnowskis, it's Bernhardt, it's Fairman, but Lewis Dubik, he is on and producing. He just makes that attack that much more difficult to cover. And, and he's a difference maker. Out of the pack, Zinn goes to the goal. Kick save by Dolan. Loose ball coming up for Maryland. Corley there trying to get some help from the keeper. Dolan, nice job using his cross to volley that to himself, and then Puglisi will bring it along. But last week, Maryland got the better goaltending play than Johns Hopkins did. It didn't really matter because of the dearth of possessions that Maryland enjoyed. Now they're getting possession time. Hopkins is getting clean looks, and Dolan, so far, has outplayed Ryan Darby. Darby needs to start making some saves for the Blue Jays. Terrapins can have the last possession of the quarter if they choose. Shot clock at 45, but... Looked like there was some type of substitution violation. Foley wanted a quick restart. As he floats this one along, Jones gets buried by Massey. The officials say play on. Wow. Seven seconds left in the frame. Long range drive goes wide to Darby. Sent on the goal by uh, Dubik. With just uh, two seconds remaining, this long heave comes the full length of the field as the horn and siren sounds ending the opening 15 minutes action packed here in piscataway
Maryland and Johns Hopkins renewing acquaintances. It's 4-2 Terps. It's time now for us to spell out the State Farm State of Success. Having a look at the Big Ten Tournament champs throughout the years. Season number five of Big Ten play. For as competitive and deep as this league has been over five years, only two champions, Johns Hopkins and Maryland team. No host school has ever won the Big Ten Tournament. That trend will continue as Rutgers was dismissed in our first contest by Penn State. Let us catch you up on the goings on in the first 15 minutes. Maryland has the 4-2 advantage and they are once again shooting precisely. They're getting good goaltending from Danny Dolan as well as he's made six stops. Brian Darby in the cage for Dave Petromala's squad still without a save through this first quarter. We'll say this, that the end of the sequence of the officiating crew was, was not good. Foley didn't get five yards on the quick restart, didn't get the quick restart. If the guy's standing in front of you and makes contact, that's on the defender, and then they missed a at least a loose ball push on Danny Jones, but Ryan Darby, he's got to start making some saves for Johns Hopkins. He cannot expect only to make two tonight and Hopkins to win again. He was only credited with two the other day in College Park. You and I both thought it was more than yeah. that. Dave Petromala and his staff, they charted him for four saves, right. but still, they were all saying it's got to be better this time around. Yeah, two or four. Either way, you, you want to get as close to double digits. I mean, if you don't have to make saves, great. But if you do, let, you got to step up and, and help your team. D. Simone drifting back behind the net. D. Simone gets a little screen. Finds Kincannon off the split dodge. Good help coming there quickly from Puglisi. The top short stick defensive midfielder for John Tillman. Epstein, then Kincannon. Kincannon on the front sweep. Fires off the post. Rebounds loose. Rosowski digging for it, and he'll come up with it for Maryland. Well, that's another player that we didn't call his name a whole lot. What a ride. Blue Jays off the ride, stripping the ball, and it's Kyle Marr who has it. I love the way this Hopkins attack has ridden the last couple of games, and we didn't call Brzezowski's name, I don't think, at all last Saturday night. He made a huge play right there. Great ground ball, but I love how Kincannon hid his stick from Danny Dolan. Get that thing way back there and don't show off your hand. That was a six-side low shot that rung off the, the bottom elbow of the cage. Blue Jays in possession. Forey Smith on the go. Up top for Williams. Again, attacking from the, from the top. Williams will take it for a little ride against Welding. Rolling in. Williams fires off the outside of the goal. Smith is there to cover up defensively along with Maycar's help. Epstein fidgets back behind the cage. Trades it off. This is a sharp angle bid that rattles around off a dole in the net and then goes for a diving effort. They're going to keep the ball in favor of Johns Hopkins. Reset his shot clock as well as Dolan makes another save and a defensive timeout being taken by John Tillman to reset his troops. 4-2, Maryland has the advantage. Just shy of the two minute mark in quarter two. Back to Piscataway after these words. Folks, tomorrow on BTN, the 2019 Big Ten Women's Lacrosse Tournament gets underway in Baltimore. Maryland will be clashing with Penn State. Then Northwestern squares off against Michigan in semifinal action. Live coverage from Johns Hopkins begins tomorrow, 5 Eastern, right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Maryland looking for another Big Ten tournament steal. The list goes on and on. Penn State rejuvenated. They won a couple down the stretch to grab that number four speed, uh, seed led by Kayla Brissolari. And Northwestern, Izzy Skane, Selena Lasota taking on the upstart. Michigan Wolverines led by head coach Hannah Nielsen and Caitlin Meir on offense. Lasota is still at Northwestern? She's still at Northwestern? Wow. I think she's only, no, I'm just kidding. I was going to say she's only a sophomore, <laughs> but no, I think she's a senior. Dean Linky and she and Stanford Birch have a call for us tomorrow on BTN. As it's uh, the Blue Jays who have possession right now. Not for long. Welding on the clear with the help from Makar. Weird behind the goal. It was almost like a ghost check. The ghost of Al Noslonski or something from Rutgers years past making the Takeaway right there. Can you spell that, please? N A S L O N S K I. Obviously, ask <laughs> and you shall receive. Terrapins trying to build on a 4 2 advantage. 
Dubik, DeMeo, Long, and Bernhardt, four different goal scorers for the guys in the black jerseys. Squaring off once again with Johns Hopkins in the greatest rivalry in college lacrosse. This is Will Snyder. Brother Drew had the chance to play in this rivalry, an outstanding player in his own right. Wisnowskis is a long way from the goal. Sharing the rock this way for Bubba Fairman. Fairman draws a crowd. His pass gets away from Dubik. It's Johns Hopkins' ball. Yeah, and Hopkins, much like Maryland last week, did they, Maryland didn't look comfortable last week. Hopkins right now doesn't look comfortable. Great timeout by John Tillman. Reset his defense, and then Hopkins just dropped the ball. But look at Zinn. Flying in the attack third. An instant clear there for the Blue Jays. Wearing that number 29, and I know it's a different shade of blue, but that just gave me flashbacks of Jim Busick from the North Carolina Tar Heels back in the early 90s. He also wore 29 and similar body build, and Zinn is a little taller, but man, just as fast. Zinn on the go, high heat, no trouble for Danny Dolan. He crossed over beautifully and snapped that out of the air. Dolan leaving the cage for Maryland. Terps have 20 seconds to get it across the midline. That time counter is down to five right now. Dolan advancing the ball on a long stretch there. It'll get away. Scooped up nicely. Blue Jays looking to return the favor once again with Zinn. Not looking for excuses for either ball club, but when we kicked off at five o'clock, I think it was around 80 degrees here. Very, very much so. And temperatures are now probably in the low 60s, maybe high 50s. But the stick work just has not been up to snuff for either one of these ball clubs as Maryland drops on the clear attempt. Baskin lost it there out of his cross. There's a flag down as Puglisi was attacked. Puglisi pops up. Maryland is soon to go extra man. Leading by two. No scoring of which to speak yet in the second frame which is almost five minutes old. Jared Bernhardt wants the ball in his cross more tonight. Blue Jays are doing their best to get it out of his cross as quickly as possible. Sidewinder, he scores! Jared Bernhardt. I like the patience of Jared Bernhardt, who has a tendency to be a little bit passive, too passive on the offensive end. Flag down so you know it's a free possession for the Terps. And watch him just work against Pat Foley. Good communication defensively, but he just lowers his shoulder. And this is where he's evolved his game. Jared Bernhardt has gone to a lacrosse player. Look at that. The in, the out, step away, use the defender's pressure and momentum against him, and then whip that shot over the left shoulder of the right-handed goaltender, Ryan Darby. Penalty is going to be a cross check. It's Evan Zinn getting up into the face of Roman Puglisi, so a man up faceoff will come for Maryland. Jared Bernhard deposits the goal, now tallies an 18 straight for the first team all conference, number one for Maryland, wearing that jersey with pride and performing extremely well. Scored his 100th career goal recently. That was the overtime game winner for the Terps as they went into Columbus and edged the Buckeyes. And, and a guy who, throughout his career at Maryland, people, you know, we, we've watched him evolve, again, from that speed merchant to this refined lacrosse player, a guy who makes really good decisions. Stick work has gotten a lot better. But last week after the loss, people were left scratching their heads saying, why didn't number one have the ball in his stick a little bit more when Maryland had so few possessions? And I think it just speaks to the game plan of offensive coordinator J.L. Repper. Get everybody touches, get everybody involved. It's not a one-man show. But I love Bernhardt's decision right there to keep the ball, press, press, instead of giving it up, takes the shot. Terps have to be feeling good with a three-goal lead and Danny Dolan looking sharp in the nets. He has been terrific so far in this game. I thought he was pretty good last week, but he wasn't really good early, and here he's making saves every which way. He's very good down low. So if you want to beat Danny Dolan, you got to go opposite stick high. That one was high to high, stick side. But the fact of the matter is, I like how Dolan is seeing the ball in a stadium he's not used to playing in a whole lot with lights in the evening. And you can see right away, his first save was as clean as a whistle. Saw it, caught it, saved it, no rebound, and 
he has continued to play very strong lacrosse here in the first half. Eight times in double figures with stops this season. He seems to be well on his way to another one of those this evening. John Tillman's squad trying to advance through and share a date in the championship game of this Big Ten tournament with Penn State. The Nittany Lions showing off their high-powered offense again earlier today in the first semifinal. They racked up 18 goals in Downing Rutgers. Man, just a dominant performance. Grant Amon, typically a distributor, came into the game with 71 assists. He scored four goals, still had three helpers, but showed off his versatility. Nick Spillane, big game. Mac O'Keefe, big game. And Colby Kinnis and that Penn State defense, they are showing that they are not just an offensive scoring team, but they can clamp down defensively as well. Fairman and Shockey combined to win the draw for the Terps. Maryland, as a team, shoots 35% on the season. Tonight, they're at 56. And again, Ryan Darby, you've got to start making some saves if we're now going on five and a half quarters of lacrosse against the Maryland Terrapins. Let's say he did have four saves in that first meeting. He still only has four saves. He needs a confidence setter soon. Fairman, long way from the cooker. Change the formation, swing it on around. Adjusting again to the interior, and this one's potted. Slam dunk inside for Maryland's Wisnowskis. Good ball movement, good motion from this Maryland extra man unit. Wisnowskis is just gonna use a size right here. A little exchange, look at him get inside. Great body control not to go into the crease. And this is what you get when you have six foot two against basically five foot ten. Just a dunk right over top of Ryan Darby's head. And there's Zinn, knowing that his penalty led to that extra man opportunity. But hey, Zinn, for my money, he's been flying all around the field here tonight. And he's been a, a positive for Johns Hopkins where there hasn't been a whole lot. He was hanging his head there. Wisnowskis is on the verge of a 40-goal campaign. This redshirt sophomore began his collegiate career at Syracuse. He was a redshirt there in 2017. Transferred to Maryland in that summer. And wow, has he been effective for the Terps since stepping onto campus in College Park. Whistles blare out off the ensuing faceoff. A violation against Matt Naruski gives Maryland the ball. Maryland a 6-2 leader. They have the last three goals in this run. Snyder on the exchange. Will Snyder straight away. It's a screen set from Bernhardt. One of those pick and whip type plays that Dave Petromala talks about. Nice look down close to the pipe there. Fairman had it rejected. Darby was pinned to that post and then the flag, two of them hit the turf. Yeah, it looked like initially we we're going to have a moving pick, but I think this is going to turn into an illegal body check against the Maryland Terrapins. Ryan Coulter just got lit up. That was Fairman to put the crunch on. Coulter, part of that short stick defensive midfield rotation for Dave Petromala. Personal foul, two black. Unnecessary roughness, contact with a head, one minute, non-releasable. Two black, unnecessary roughness, contact with a head, one minute, non-releasable. Ball was within five yards, so contact is permissible. Looked like Fairman threw his shoulder into the chest of Coulter. But any big hit in this day and age of lacrosse, especially in an open field situation, is typically going to get flagged. And I guess the referees deemed his shoulder or his elbow got to the head and neck area of Johns Hopkins. Blue Jays going to work on extra man. A little bit better than 40% effective on the regular season. Now into tournament action. Back door on the quick setup looking for Kincannon. He was defended by Rahill all the way to the end line. And it will be Maryland ball. They say the ball doesn't lie. <laughs> that was a quick turnover by Hopkins after the questionable call on Fairman. Nick Brozowski will bring it ahead for the Terps. Making sure they stay on side at the midline. Alex Smith, who is a transfer from the University of Hartford. We hear a whistle. 
They're saying offsides. Another against, exchange of possession. Yeah, they're saying offsides against Maryland, but they got five guys back in the defensive end, not including their goaltender. See John Tillman for the Terps with big man yep. written across yep. the chest. Memories of the big man, Dick Adell, who passed away a year ago today. A year ago today. One year anniversary of... Uh, of Coach Dick Adele passing away. Our thoughts and, uh, are still with him and his family. And Good to see Maryland still remembering one of the most iconic people, not just in Maryland lacrosse history, but in the sport. U.S. Lacrosse Hall of Famer, Maryland head coach, Army head coach. Seven and a half played now in the second quarter. Can Cannon trying to bulldoze his way in there against Ray Hill. Blue Jays will set it up for Forey Smith. Smith gets into the alley, lets it go. Off the angle, Dolan was there. They'll reset the shot clock. Dolan got a chunk of that. The Terps have been a little turnover prone in this first half. Despite their 6-2 lead, they've coughed it up 10 times. Blue Jays settling in here with DeSimone. Williams, feed to the interior. Whoa, look out, can Cannon just low bridge the big hit there as Williams comes up with it. 50 seconds to shoot for Johns Hopkins in white. And Maryland defensively is much more organized this, this week, this game. They're not doubling the ball needlessly and they're all staying in their lanes, all staying in their defensive responsibilities. Epstein turns. Flings that one wide. It's backed up by DeSimone. Keep it hot for Marr. And that one is answered by Dolan, who has been one of the big stories in the first 30 minutes. Another nice save. Kyle Marr finally got his arms free, but he loves to go near post high. That happens to be the lefty Danny Dolan stick side high. He read it all the way. And again, another clean save for the Maryland netminder. Top of the screen, the save story dominant in favor of Dolan. And the Terps. Bernhardt had a couple of goals in the first quarter back on Saturday. He's got two again in this first half tonight. Maryland out to a 6-2 advantage. The Blue Jays have not put one on the board since a cannon strike in the first quarter. Massey. Bring it this way for Bernhardt. Isolating against Foley. Swings the crease. Bernhardt will try it again off the redodge. Massey there to help. Good work on the perimeter defense. This is Dubik will take it for a little ride. Shot clock at 10 for the Terps. Good stick check way out on the perimeter. The defense turned in there by Colwell as this will go back over to the Blue Jays who were buttoned up at just the right time. Good defensive stand, much needed, not giving Maryland any clean looks on Cage. Now they have to turn the positive from the defensive end into a positive on the offensive end. And Maryland has got Hopkins seemingly confused. They're trying to jam the middle, trying to feed the middle, and the Terps are just really organized inside and not giving up anything. They're giving up those outside shots, but Dolan with the way he's playing and seeing the ball, they're okay with that. We leak below five minutes left in the opening half. Sloppiness for a Blue Jays there, and that's a, a turn over to Maryland. Simple catch and pass stuff there. Fundamentals. Clearing time for Curtis Corley. Corley, the third-year starter in back, who hails from the great state of New Jersey, Medford Lakes to be specific. He was the man who carried the flag out of the tunnel for Maryland tonight. Into Big Ten semifinal action. The winner of this one gets Penn State, the number one ranked team in the land, he is already into Saturday night's showdown, 7 p.m. Eastern on BTN. Fairman picked up on the outside by Reinson. Getting help from Foley. Fairman attacking from behind the cage. Snyder's turn here off the split dodge. He'll roll back. 
couldn't pull the trigger. Darby made a good save there. Rebound chance. Darby sprawls. And they keep this one off the goal line. Back-to-back -back brilliant saves. Wow, nice job, Ryan Darby. Saw that one all the way, and then he gave up the rebound and was able to sprawl and make a nice reaction save. Beautiful job, Ryan Darby. We'll see if that can ignite him. That's his third, second and third save of the evening. 3-10 left in the first half. 6-2 Maryland. Terps are the only two goals in this quarter. Compliments of Bernhardt and Wisnowskis. Their top two scorers on the season. And that last shot by Wisnowskis with time and space wide open. I'm surprised he didn't try to go high in some fashion on Ryan Darby. Blue Jays have it. Forey Smith against Fairman. Around the screen set by Epstein. Epstein calling for it. He has a short stick defender on him now. It's Fairman. Epstein trying to finalize. That pass is a little bit tall. De Simone keeps it for the Blue Jays with two and a half to go. Well, it's been by committee being guarding Epstein tonight. Corley's been on him. Welding's been on him. Maycar's been on him. Shot clock at 10. Skip it for Smith. Picked off there in the process by Corley. Latter stages of the opening half. A little bit more than two minutes with which to work. It's been a dry spell for the Blue Jays for quite some time. Jared Bernhardt brings it to the sideline. Subs coming on. Massey there has the ball for Maryland. 44 in the black. Zawadzki is next. Picked up on the perimeter by Ryan Coulter. Ray Pine showing. Massey off the split. Massey couldn't pull the trigger. Kyle Long. Very quick twitch. Long picked up by Danny Jones. Coulter is on Bernhardt. Bernhardt fires. Darby makes another save. And away come the Blue Jays. It's Kuhn on the run. Good saves. Again, got to capitalize if you're Hopkins on the other end of the field. They do have a timeout in their pocket. We'll see if they... Bobby Benson wants to use it and set something up for this last one minute. There wasn't a chance for Kuhn to go to the goal that time. Both Kuhn and Foley scored long stick goals in College Park back on Saturday. Under a minute remaining in the half. Yeah, and Hopkins has not been able to get any of those big juice plays to really get their momentum going. Blue Jays can take it for the balance of the quarter. Shot clock at 40. The game clock just over 30. Deliberately waiting now, De Simone as Concanon comes to fetch. Marked by Zawadzki. Little two man game. Send it up top. Williams slings it on, and it's a great save there by Dolan. Zawadzki takes a misstep on the clear. Brings it ahead with time ticking. Just two seconds left. And that will do it for the opening half in Piscataway, New Jersey. John Tillman's squad keeping the Blue Jays off the board for the entirety of the second quarter and taking a 6-2 lead off to the dressing room. Terrific goaltending from Danny Dolan. He's been the difference here in the first half for the Maryland Terrapins. He has been on point from the opening whistle. Meanwhile, John Tillman's offense, too, winning some face-offs and getting some possession time, and they've cashed in. Number three seeded Maryland with a mark of 11 and three. Hopkins, the number two seed, entering play with a seven and six mark. Dave Petromala, the head coach of the Blue Jays, joins us. And Dave, put your analyst hat on. How would you describe those uh, first 30 minutes? Uh, you know what, Joe? I think we're playing with terrific energy. We're riding the ball back. We're hustling our tails off. I, I just think we're making some silly plays. You know, defensively, two to the ball, and they throw one inside. Um, you know, offensively, I think right now is where we got we to we take a step back, take a deep breath, uh, just kind of relax a little bit. 
we're, we're, we're pushing the tempo. We're, we're looking for the first shot rather than the best shot. You know, we've had some good opportunities, haven't finished them. So, you know, we'll fight. We just got to make a couple adjustments uh, offensively in the second half. And defensively, I thought we actually buckled down uh, in the latter part of the uh, second quarter. Was pleased with that. Forced a couple of turnovers. So we'll, uh, we'll come out. We'll fight. Coach, uh, you are getting some looks offensively. I know it's not the effort or the execution that you want, but Danny Dolan, their netminder, has been strong in the first 30 minutes. What are you seeing out of him and, and some ways you might be able to beat him in the second half? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a lack of effort, Mark. I, I, and I'm not disappointed in our effort offensively. We're getting good looks. I don't think we're taking very intelligent shots. You know, we, we put about three or four right in the stick. He's holding that pipe tight. I think we got to make a move a little bit. I think we got to take shots off the feed rather than just coming around the corner. He's just sitting on those pipes uh, and hugging them tight. I think we got to move him a little bit more. Dave, thanks very much for the knowledge. We appreciate it. Okay, guys, thank you. Blue Jays in the white jerseys, trailing by four at the halftime break. Epstein holding up his end of the bargain. Dubik outstanding for the Terps. Mark joins me for halftime festivities on the other side. Lacrosse on BTN is brought to you by Meyer, the official home gating headquarters of Big Ten fans. And by SoFi. Get your money right. Hopkins in Maryland. The first varsity matchup goes back to 1924. These storied rivals squaring off tonight in the semifinals of the Big Ten Men's Lacrosse Tournament. 6-2 Terps at the halftime break. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you on BTN tonight from Piscataway, New Jersey. Mark, coaches are always looking for difference makers. What was the difference maker between these two teams over 30 minutes? Saves and Danny Dolan for the University of Maryland. 9 first half stops Maryland turned the ball over in that first half 11 times and I think a lot of those turnovers were masked and covered up by the outstanding goaltending of Danny Dolan I like their offensive execution as well but Dolan has been the biggest difference the man asks for Dolan highlights we provide Dolan highlights he was super sound in the first 30 minutes and, and he's a lefty who had 13 saves a week ago but probably gave up some that he thought he should have stopped and wished he had a couple back and from the opening whistle on Hopkins' first shot, he's been seeing the ball incredibly cleanly, making good saves, not giving up rebounds. Maryland relies on this man to get to the hoop. And I like how he's playing with a little bit more emotion tonight. That's just two guys running to the ball and leaving number one open. But this shows his evolution and maturation. Coming around the goal, instead of just trying to sprint by Patrick Foley, he bodies him, points to the muscle and say, I've been working out, boys. Jump on my back and let's go to the Big Ten Championship. Jared Bernhardt and the Terrapins trying to put down the Blue Jays. We'll get you back for more, maybe even share more stats with you after these words. The Maryland Terrapins have a 6-2 lead after two quarters of play in Piscataway, and they have Danny Dolan to protect that advantage. And Mark, Danny Dolan during the first half was playing stick doctor. He was, and we're going to get a look at him at a timeout in the second quarter. What he's doing is he's basically putting... What is a, a shooter string at the top of his goalie stick? There you can see him weaving it in during a timeout. There's a shot on your left in the first quarter versus the second quarter. And he was having some trouble with his outlet passes. You don't have that shooting string to kind of guide the ball out of your stick. You don't know where it's going to go. And Dolan has been much more accurate with that shooting string in his cross. Maryland head coach John Tillman is joining us from the sideline. John, what was improved in the first half compared to Saturday's showing in College Park? Uh, I could hear you before, It's it's now it's kind of quiet. Um, John, can you hear me now? Uh, just, what, was, I, what did you I can hear you on um, this game? Awesome, awesome. Uh, I just think we're facing off better. Um, I think our energy's better. Um, you know, we're doing a little better job off the ground. Uh, Danny's seen the ball pretty well tonight. How would you best describe that first half by your goalkeeper, Danny Dolan, nine saves? Yeah, that was really important. If you look at it, we're getting out shot. And we're getting out shot on goal. So that was one of the things we talked about at halftime. Don't play the scoreboard. There's obviously there's some plays that they're making. We need to clean some things up. They're getting some good looks right now. Coach, thanks for the input. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. John Tillman, kind enough to join us before the start of the third quarter. It's college lacrosse on BTN. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon 
shouting out thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew throughout the day and night here in Piscataway, back in our Chicago studios as we bring you the second semifinal of the Big Ten Men's Lacrosse Tournament. Penn State has already Saturday's championship finale. Grant Ament, another seven-point performance. The Nittany Lions rolled over the tournament host, Rutgers, the four seed by an 18-6 margin. They get the winner of this one. Quarter number three set to begin. A great camera work, seeing what the referees are doing, keeping the stick straight up and down, putting the ball in between, and let's play. Every Big Ten championship game has had Johns Hopkins or Maryland in it, and that will remain true come Saturday night. And as these two teams battle to be dance partners with Penn State. Yeah, and I like what Dave Petramala said at halftime about moving Danny Dolan. Most of those shots that they're taking, they're clean looks, but they're straight away. They're not any feeds cross crease or feeds coming from up top to uh, down low and vice versa. So a little bit more ball movement, but credit Maryland. They've been getting their sticks in the passing lanes, knocking things down, intercepting balls, doing a nice job. Johns Hopkins playing its fourth straight top 10 ranked team. Has not scored since late in the opening quarter. D. Simone wants to change that right off the bat in period three. Away from the Mar screen, he'll offer to Forey Smith. Smith into the alley, back behind the cage. Maryland's hung up here. Quick passing play, Epstein looking for Mar. Ball down. Corley barrels his way into the pack, and this one comes up for Maryland's Rosowski as the clear begins for Roman Puglisi. I like the idea offensively for Johns Hopkins, but the ball just couldn't get from point A to point B, that feed from behind up top. Puglisi scored shorthanded mark back on Saturday, the first Terrapin shorty in seven seasons. I, I, I love Roman Puglisi. I think he's, his game has evolved from freshman to sophomore year. I'm just a little surprised he's not on the field more for the Maryland Terrapins. He's getting an extended run right here, a little cat and mouse inside with Lewis Dubik. We'll see if he sprints to the midfield line to try to get an extra little couple step opportunity advantage for his teammate. Will Snyder trying to juke his way free from Danny Jones. Fairman going downhill, quickly sends it to Bernhardt. Bernhardt over the top. This drive answered by Darby, who's made four or five saves in succession now. He's settled in nicely after a rocky patch. Maryland gets the ball back with Will Snyder, the senior from Seattle, Washington. They give Darby a lot of credit. He dusted himself off. He's seeing the ball much better and still giving up a lot of rebounds, though. And not only is it another possession for Maryland, but it's also a reset of the 80-second shot clock. Dubik against Hubler. Dubik tried to skip that one through the defense. It was deflected. Ball down. DeMeo trying to drag that ball away for the scoop. And it comes up for Johns Hopkins Owen Colwell. In transition, Hubler. Hubler looking for a numbers advantage. None there. So Marr says, let's settle down. A great job by Bubba Fairman for the Maryland Terrapins. Getting back in the hole. Cutting that field in half. Uh, Schneider did the same thing. Will Schneider. And that wasn't the case a week ago as two pole goals by Kuhn and Foley. That time they cut the field off and didn't allow Hopkins to make that big play. Epstein and Concanon mark back in the first quarter for Johns Hopkins, and that's it. Nothing yet from this man, Cole Williams. Marching towards the goal, chased by Macon. Switching up for Zinn straight away, and he hums that one wide of the target. Nice ball movement by the Jays, and a good one more from Kyle Marr, sharing it with Evan Zinn. Whistles blare out on the restart. Brett Baskin's a sophomore. Baskin, whose father played at Maryland, son of Susan and Glenn. Williams, nice dodge, feeds it for Keough. Keough fires off the ground. It's handled by Dolan. Maryland with a quick clear. Moving it on, it's Gepper. John Geppert, part of that uh, short stick defensive midfield collection for the Terps. Get it in the cross of Bubba Fairman, the fourth leading scorer for Maryland this season. Off of his five goal performance back on Saturday. Well, right now, Danny Dolan, that ball has to look like a volleyball coming out of the stick. That was a nice little hitch move by Keogh. Wisnowskis looks across for DeMeo. 
Bring it this way to Fairman. Goal line extended. Reinson is there within the long stick midfielder. DeMeo will change the point of attack. Then work from the top. He loves that split dodge move. Wisnowskis calling for it. Fairman rolling back. Shot clock at 15. DeMeo off the swim. Turns. Boxed in by Coulter. Behind the back bid. Snyder didn't get there. Blue Jays on the end line. Nice stick work by Foley as the Jays begin the clear. Well, sweet ground ball. Keep it in bounds. And then he turns to his strong hand. Head up. Nice defensive stand right there for the Blue Jays. I thought Maryland was going to be able to sneak one on the behind the back. Darby was there to make the save, and Foley cleans up the garbage. And Hopkins now, they have to settle down offensively and got to figure out a way to beat number 14 in the black and red. Five minutes clear here in the third quarter. Still looking for the first goal of the frame either way. DeSimone. Points in six of his last seven. Lurking back behind the cage, it's Kincannon. Very shifty, very quick. De Simone off the split dodge, gets a step on his defender. Here comes the help from Mako. Fung it on around for Marr. Marr a long way from the goal. Epstein wants it. On a sneak here. Kincannon was bumped away from the crease. Shot clock at 14. Epstein isolating against the shorty. Skip a man. Outside heat from Kincannon that missed the target. And he was buried by Snyder after the shot. Three seconds to shoot. Quick stick inside. Goes wide. Williams says it should be a new shot clock, and the officials agree. Guess Dolan got a little piece of that, but, man, that was a bunny. Kyle Marr missing on that opportunity from Cole Williams. It remains 6-2 Maryland. Uh, you, what you see Maryland doing when Epstein has the ball, no matter if he's on a shorty or a pole, they are sliding right away. Look at, look at Brzezowski. He's sliding before he even goes to the cage. Beautiful movement there for Marr, and he puts it home. Excellent recognition for Kyle Marr. That is a big goal for the Blue Jays. They keep the possession alive. Great whistle readiness by Cole Williams off that end line on short time on the shot clock. Shot hits Dolan, fresh 80. Look at this, Snyder and then Brzezowski. Nice job by Kyle Marr as that slide came cross crease. So I think the Maryland defense was anticipating a post-to-post -post feed. Marr just breaks down the middle, collects it, puts it past Dolan, and that's got to feel good if you're the Blue Jays. Marr, who has points in 29 straight games. Kyle Marr, who tallied three times last year against the Terps in the Big Ten Tournament title game, won by Johns Hopkins. Blue Jays get the ball right back. Trailing by three. Ending lengthy drought since the tail end of the opening quarter. Well, that's moving Dolan as well. The feed from Epstein at goal line extended. Dolan couldn't recover in time. We'll see if this is the, the goal that can spark this Hopkins offense. And all of a sudden, Maryland's starting to play a lot of defense. Keo will invert against Kiermonte. Here comes the help from Smith. Epstein picked up by Welding. Joey Epstein, the unanimous freshman of the year in the Big Ten. Bounce shot coming, score! Haskin. Excellent matchup recognition by the Johns Hopkins players behind the cage. And Baskin moving without the ball. Look at number one in white. Cummins sets a pick. And then once the two defenders go by, he slips out the back door. And he's able to use the momentum of Smith against him. Because Smith has to recover. He's got to fly out to Brent Baskin. He absorbs that first check, steps around, and then just puts a nice little bouncer past Danny Dolan. Excellent offense by the Blue Jays. Brett Baskin, former Philadelphia Prep Player of the Year, has a three-game goal-scoring streak. He brings the Blue Jays within two. Another skirmish for the ground ball. 
The officials awarding it to Black Jersey, Maryland. It was a withholding against number nine in white. Hubler was on the ground and no one else could get to the rock. He had it covered up with his stick, withholding, we're going Maryland. Bernhard and Foley way out there on the flank. As the Terps have seen their four goal lead cut in half, Zawatski and Massey play and catch a long way from the cage. Bernhard off of a screen. Traded off to Colwell there. Zawatski changes the point of attack. Wisnowskis gets underneath. Run to the ditch by Raypon. Wisnowskis again. For Long playing hide and seek. Kyle Long fenced in there back behind the goal. Loops it to Massey. Massey draws the double team from Raypine, beats it, goes to the cage and rings the post. He hit the crossbar pipe junction and the Blue Jays come racing back. Another big boy ground ball by Patrick Foley. Hopkins bailed out by the iron. Second team all-conference defender Pat Foley among the top five in Hopkins history when it comes to cause turnovers. Gives his offense another chance. Williams against Corley. Williams fires, he scores! Cole Williams, it's three in a row for the Jays. They say oftentimes, the pipe is a goalie's best friend. Massey, Russell Massey, gets a step, comes underneath, shoots, and it rings off the iron. But look at this ground ball by Pat Foley. Picks it up right on the island, in the lion's den in front of the cage. And I love this change of motion, change of speed by Cole Williams. In, out, change of speed. And Danny Dolan, on the last two Johns Hopkins shots, hasn't moved. So for as well as he was seeing the ball early, he looks frozen on the last two Hopkins markers. Looked like he was Velcro to the goal line there. Williams provides. The Blue Jays are within one on BTN. Brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Talk to a State Farm agent today. By Diet Dr. Pepper, it's the sweet one. And by Sector Spider ETFs, the next chapter in investing. Call 866-SECTOR-ETFs. The battle resumes between Maryland and Johns Hopkins. And once again, Dave Petromala's squad has uh, started to climb back after an early deficit. Yeah, four-goal deficit in the first quarter, first half of Saturday night. Four-goal deficit here at halftime. And John Tillman, I'm sure he's going to make adjustments. This game far from over and, and as entertaining as we thought it was going to be. Thinking back to that uh, first encounter, Dave Petromala said, you know what, after seeing the Blue Jays get run over by Penn State and then the 5-1 deficit, he thought Maryland might have figured, well, Johns Hopkins is going to roll over. Coach Petromala loved the fight his team displayed on Saturday, winning eventually 16-11 on enemy turf. They have not been afraid to go into College Park lately, right? They've won nine of their last ten road games there. This is a passing play that gets away from Welding. Johns Hopkins has a chance to knock the score right now. Yeah, and I love the recovery by Ray Hill. He slipped, but then was able to pick the ball up, but then he throws it at the shoelaces. So right now, Maryland's in that danger zone where they've given up three goals in a row. Danny Dolan started out incredibly well. Hasn't looked this sharp on the last couple of shots, so big defensive stand for the Terps. Blue Jays were ice cold for over half an hour. They picked it up lately, though. De Simone on the swim against the double team. Bring it back to the top. On the exchange, Ken Cannon. Skip a man, Forey Smith hesitates and bounces that one over top of the goal. Backed up by the Blue Jays, Joey Epstein. We saw Smith score a similar goal on Saturday night. Catch, hesitation, step around. By the time he just bounces it a little too high. Epstein carving, Smith fires. Dolan able to shrug that one off and the big rebound all the way on to the Johns Hopkins side of the midfield strike. The officials awarding the ball to the Blue Jays. And Kyle Marr has it in his cross. Well, incredible awareness by the defense and the attack. It was Ray Pine and Wisnowskis in a foot race to the sideline. 
every play, every inch of the field, everything tonight counts trying to go to the Big Ten Championship game. Epstein picked up by a pair of defenders. Drops this one off. Forey Smith to the alley, pumps it, he scores! Forey Smith. Rewarded by the hustle of Jack Rapine on the defensive end after that shot came all the way out to the midfield line. Hopkins with a second chance possession. We mentioned Smith and the pump fake that he had on the possession prior. This is this organization by that Maryland D. Ray Hill's got a race out to try to close out number four in white. And Smith, that little hitch move, and it looked like it hit Dolan's right foot and then just trickles in the cage. Nonetheless, we're tied at six. Just had enough momentum there, Mark. Forey Smith, who was two plus two in the win back on Saturday. The Under Armour All-American gets himself on the board again. Hopkins with four straight. And we are tied for the first time since 1-1, way back in the opening quarter. Wes Janik is 22 in the black for Maryland. See him from time to time taking face-offs and in the short stick defensive midfield rotation. Fourth year that he's done that in the Maryland program. Terps with Bernhardt. Hoping to lose Foley back behind the cage. Around the screen set by DeMeo. They play a two-man cat and mouse game. Halfway through the shot clock, Bernhardt feeds. With good communication for Jones and Foley getting through those that little two-man game. DeMeo sent some nice picks. Fairman picked up by Kuhn. Now he'll trade him off to Eubler after the pick. Fairman against the short stick. That's going to draw help from the D. Snyder over the head check. He dodged that. Foley was looking for the takeaway. Shot clock at 12. DeMeo loves his left. Let's it fly wide of Darby. The backup belongs to Maryland with six seconds to shoot. They're doing it again. Maryland's got, it's a six on four. Hopkins has to be buttoned up. They got burned on this before. Bernhardt with the speed, racing to the crease. He's in it. And it's a violation against Bernhardt, giving the ball to the Blue Jays. It looked like good discipline from the defenders. Bernhardt got a step, but a poor angle. They didn't shove him in the back. Darby stood his ground and was able to stonewall him. And the momentum carries Bernhardt into the crease. Perhaps no attackman in the country can cover as much ground on a restart behind the cage is Jared Bernhardt. He is an amazing athlete. Former triple option quarterback in high school. Didn't Dave Petromala say there was a, a couple of times he went and watched uh, yeah. Bernhardt play football in the Florida area? Very familiar and friendly with the Bernhardt family. And that Florida football is uh, no joke at the high school level. Top notch. Ball down on the turf. Flag there as well. Loose ball coming up for the Blue Jays. Johns Hopkins is a about to go extra man. That looked like it was over and back. Yeah, absolutely. And it is going to bring play to a halt and send the Jays six on five. And even with the flag down, you can't go across that midfield line, courtesy of the offense. Here we're going to see it's Smith just a shove on the top shoulder right in the back of Baskin. The over and back killed it. Blue Jays set to go extra man. A chance for them to take their first lead of the game. Second man up opportunity for Johns Hopkins, right around 40% during the campaign. Epstein rings that one off the outside of the post, gets his own rebound. Epstein hiding below the goal line. Cannon bluffs it. Marr and Kincannon lead this team, the Blue Jays, in extra man goals this season. Marr, for a long time, led the Big Ten. Epstein fires, he scores! The freshman says, follow me to the lead. You could see Epstein, that was a good shot that he had initially, near post, to the off-stick side of Dolan, and Dolan just got 
his wing up, his elbow to make the save. When the ball came back this time to Epstein, he's gonna go about five yards higher and he's just gonna let it rip to the far post. So he went near post on the first offering. Watch this just textbook high to low shot to the far post using the Maryland defender a little bit as a screen. Curtis Corley ducks, Dolan can't track it. The Blue Jays jump out to a one goal lead. Golds in every game of his freshman season, Joey Epstein, except for the Penn State matchup where he was held to one assist. Penn State is waiting for the winner of this game on Saturday in the Big Ten tournament. Johns Hopkins five unanswered to take its first lead. Reinson swinging that stick. Shockey is there, the faceoff man looking for it. He was bowled over. It's a loose ball push, giving the ball to Maryland. What began as a sunny day in Piscataway. Temperatures in the 80s. Temps right now in the mid 50s. Has there ever been a Big Ten tournament we've done together where it's been where it's been tropical? The short answer <laughs> is no, sir. <laughs> I want to bring you back to Ohio State's Jesse Owens field. You remember that one? I do. Oh. The year before at Hopkins, remember we had on yes. uh, we had on wool caps yeah. and uh, well, we're not far from that right about now. True. Will Snyder backing away. Seven six for the Blue Jays. Epstein's second of the game, giving Johns Hopkins the advantage. This is just six days after they downed Maryland in College Park. It's the first time these schools have ever played back-to-back -back games. Well, you got to think about looking beyond this, the NCAA tournament ramifications. Bernhardt fires. That's broken up. Foley wants to go the other way. He gets his clamps on it. Lays it on for Ray Pine. To the trailer. Ryan Coulter. Danny Jones is next. Watch out from the blind side there. Parr going to the goal. Coulter fires. Kicked out by Dolan. A huge save there for the Maryland netminder. Priest violation against Johns Hopkins. Back come the Turks. Dolan's dialed back in. That was a, a good shot by Coulter. I thought he hesitated, though, by rearing it back and dropping his stick. He tipped Dolan off where he was going to shoot it. Late in the third quarter, the pass is intercepted. It sent the length of the field. And as you might anticipate, folks, we have 15 minutes left in the greatest rivalry in college lacrosse. Another thriller shaping up. Seven, six Blue Jays after three. What a difference one quarter can make. Just ask Johns Hopkins, the second seed in this tournament, a five-goal spree in the third. They grab a 7-6 lead. Shooting much better, getting Danny Dolan to move a little bit. Four Maryland turnovers in that quarter, 15 for the game. Look at the shots, shots on goal. Maryland winning that face-off battle, but it has been really, really tough in the trenches at the dot. Competitive and just intense. And we're, we're gearing up for a fantastic finish. Joey Epstein's next goal would be his 38th, and it would give him the freshman goal-scoring record at Johns Hopkins. For the moment, he's tied with Terry Reardon, who fashioned 37 back in 1992. I know that guy. Yes, you do. Movement between Prouty and Shockey. Prouty left early. Maryland gets the ball. A little bit of a mix-up or a little change up there with Kyle Prouty, but just jumped the whistle, and Maryland will have an opportunity to tie this game. Only the second time this season they've been blanked in a quarter. Richmond, the only other team to do it. Fairman hoping to change that script very early in quarter four. Hewn there on the outside. Since 87, there have been seven rematches between Hopkins and Maryland. The loser of the first games come back to win the second one six times. Johns Hopkins victorious six days ago in College Park. Bernhardt on the hop. Bernhardt fires, he scores! The hat trick. Bernhardt saw the matchup he wanted. A short stick. He's licking his chops. Foley, you can see he's tried to switch off him, but good job by DeMeo to go top side and get Foley out of there. And Danny Jones just falls down. I mean, there's just... Must be a turf monster here at Rutgers because he just slips 
falls, and that's as easy as it gets. That last replay showed you he stepped on the frame of the goal, and he lost his footing. Yeah. Tough, tough break for Johns Hopkins. Bernhardt using the goal as a pick, steps around and slots it past Darby. Ten hat tricks this year for Jared Bernhardt. Hat tricks in seven of the last nine outings. We are level at seven. Inside the first minute of the fourth, Reinson comes up with a ground ball off the draw, and he'll exchange with Evan Zinn. Well, tip of the cap to Prouty for coming back and winning the next faceoff after jumping the whistle. Much more disciplined on that last one. And now we're seeing Hopkins now using a one-two punch on the faceoff, whereas Shockey has been taking the most of them. We haven't seen much, if at all, of no. Austin Henningsen, who won just 5 of 15 back on Saturday. DeSimone zips that one high. Williams is there on the backup. It stays Blue Jay ball. Good shot by DeSimone. Good pace, just a, a little bit high. Williams covers a lot of ground off that restart. Over the top for DeSimone against Puglisi. He'll leave it out top in the cross of Epstein. Corley takes him. Quick drive. Ken Cannon right back at you for the Blue Jays. Maryland's trying to regroup. Hopkins regains the lead once again. Skip passes weren't going in the first half for Johns Hopkins, but now they're moving Epstein and Williams. They're having them dodge from up top versus from behind, and that's just opening things up. Because if you're Maryland, you got to extend the defense out. O'Connell decides not to slide on Epstein. No one has the backside covered. Kincannon catches it, shoots it and gives Hopkins back the lead. Last year, these two storied rivals, Mark, in the regular season played a triple overtime game. Longest game ever in the rivalry. Kincannon had two that day. He has two today. Blue Jays back on top. On the teeter-totter now are we back and forth between Maryland and Johns Hopkins. Shockey and Prouty. And this time it's Maryland's Wes Janik who comes away with the possession. Subs coming on, offensive-minded ones for John Tillman's squad. The Terps with a mark of 11 and three. Finished up as the number three seed in this tournament. Number one Penn State awaits on Saturday night. Victorious convincingly over Rutgers earlier in the day. Fairman moves it around the horn for Schneider against Q. Steady diet now of Bernhardt for the Terrapins. He gave the ball up there. Fairman thought he had room to pull the trigger. He was closed out quickly by Foley. Foley's playing terrific lacrosse. He's playing against everybody. Yeah, take it on all comers. Bernhardt this time against Colwell. Jump shot goes wide. The back up, it'll stay. Maryland ball, 22 seconds to shoot. Hopkins dodged a bullet right there. Bernhardt got top side. I bet he wishes he could have that one back. DeMeo against Jones. DeMeo fires, straightening up there to make the stop. It's Darby. As Darby shovels, the Blue Jays begin to clear. Hubler takes it across that timeline midline. Boy, I love that clear by Hubler. When you're a midfielder and you get the ball on the defensive end, just run. Run, run, run. Take on attackmen. Attackmen can't stop middies. Run through them, run around them. Do whatever you have to do. Darby, what a great save. Hubler from Rumson, New Jersey, was a 200-meter and a 55-meter sprinter in high school. He showed it off there. I believe it, man. Keo waiting for this play to develop. Flash cut to the crease. Keep it moving. Moore knocked down there. As it was Dolan who was standing up out of his crouch. Out of his stance, Keo and the Blue Jays still have it. No shooting angle for Keo. He rolls back, and he'll settle with Williams. Second team all-conference performer, the sportsmanship honoree for the Blue Jays this season. Epstein is picked up now by Thomas O'Connell, who will play both with a long and short stick defensively for the Terps. Epstein swims against him. 
Turns the cage, trying to finalize. There's your question mark. He sent it wide. Bring it back up top. Zinn, halfway through the shot clock. Zinn, with that great separation speed, elected not to shoot. Good defense by O'Connell, not letting Epstein get topside, because you know what's coming when he gets that straight-on look. It's that low-angle shot. And O'Connell did a nice job of defending him. Let's see if he can do it again. Marked up against Epstein around the screen. Epstein gets a step. It was Dolan to the post, the rebound to the corner. And this will belong to Maryland. Great hustle by Dolan, makes the save, squirts out to the corner of the field. He knows if he can win the race, it'll be his ball, because if not, a, a reset of the shot clock and another 80-second possession for the Blue Jays. So glad you've tuned in there with us. College lacrosse on BTN. This one shaping up to be a fantastic finish. 8-7 for Johns Hopkins in the white jersey. The Maryland clear. They're begging for an offside call, and they're going to get it. And off the restart, the Blue Jays come a-running. Now, wait a minute. In order to be offside, you have to have seven guys forward. Okay, so they, they just weren't going to give Hopkins a quick restart. Oftentimes, when you get those whistles around the midfield, if the ball ends up down lower, the referees are not supposed to blow it in because that's an unfair advantage. So referees reset them more toward the midfield line, and here we go. Blue Jays in double figures in goals in 11 of their last 12 outings heading into this Big Ten semifinal. De Simone, Kincannon. And Cannon working below the goal line now. Get it into Epstein's cross, matched up by the all conference performer Carly. And Cannon will chase it down. Williams off the split dodge. Fires, he scores! Cole Williams. Cole Williams with the element of surprise in two sequences here, all within about five seconds. First, watch him receive the ball. Forey Smith is going to come set a pick. Instead of using the pick, he goes to his right hand. And there's the second surprise. A little rocker step. If I'm Danny Dolan, I'm thinking big number 14, sticking his right hand with no momentum, is going to transfer it behind the cage of Joey Epstein. Cole Williams says, no, I've been working on my offhand, some wall ball in the offseason, and during the season, I'm going to sting the upper 90 with my offhand, and that's exactly what 14 did. Second goal of the game, largest lead on the night for Johns Hopkins at 9-7. They trailed at halftime to Maryland 6-2. With a dazzling third quarter, served the Blue Jays extremely well, and you can tell top of the screen, the run they're on. Bernhard and the Terrapins have the ball, hoping to stem the tide here. Wisnowskis, who does have one, he had a goal in the second quarter. It's been a relatively quiet night for him. Took the words right out of my mouth, Joe, when I saw number 12 throw the ball to Jared Bernhard. I'm expecting him to be a little bit more involved here in this Maryland offense. But credit to Blue Jays, they've taken him out of the game so far. Bernhardt playing back behind the cage. Those two guys are so prolific. Bernhardt with a front swing, off the feed. This one snapped wide on the move there. Wisnowskis will reload his gun after missing the target. If I'm Wisnowskis, when I receive that pass from Jared Bernhardt, continue with my left and go back to where Bernhardt is and try to use him as a pick. This ground ball vacuumed up by Foley. Foley with a world-class handle there as Hubler and the Jays will look to clear. Well, look, it, it took a while, but now we're starting to see Patrick Foley, everything that made him a preseason first-team All-American, a 2018 All-Big Ten performer first team. We're starting to see that player here, particularly in the last two weeks. Senior Winchester, Massachusetts native, been rock solid on defense. Blue Jays have a two-goal advantage. We are almost halfway through the fourth. Keo will take it for a ride against Kiermonte. Keo. Getting to the top side. Maryland hedging there on defense. Williams, he'll skip below goal line. Cole Williams with a couple of goals on this day. He's had four hat tricks during the season, including the last matchup back on Saturday. Isolating against Kiermonte. 
Feeds over the top. This one's fired wide. Opening up for a split second there was Zinn. Shot clock at 14 for the Jays. Johns Hopkins in the white jersey. The winner of this one gets Penn State on Saturday night. Maryland changes the matchup, gets a pole on Williams. Baskin with his defender hung up. Dolan's gonna flash out there, try and force him into the action. He does, and Puglisi picks it. Williams sends it high, backed up by Zinn. As the shot clock expires, it's Maryland ball. Good defensive stand by the Terps. That was a good look by Williams, but it goes high, and Maryland's gotta feel really good that they were able to fend for that 80 seconds and earn the turnover. That's Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. Three cheers for all the men and women in our technical crew. Down the stretch we go, six and a half to play in the fourth. It's Maryland and Johns Hopkins with the Blue Jays on the lead by two. The last two markers, Kincannon and Williams, have gone to the guys in the white jerseys. Well, this is where the Terps need to reward their defense for making that stand, try to get one here on the other end and give them a shot in the arm. Bernhardt from the wing. Nice two-man game with Snyder. He keeps it hot. The outside drive is too tall. DeMeo uncorked that long-range drive. Anthony DeMeo hails from San Diego, California. Fairman will try it from behind the cage against Kuhn. DeMeo, all sorts of room, lets it go off the outside of the post. Darby may have gotten a chunk of that, too. And the Nets for Johns Hopkins. Good shot by DeMeo, but good news for Johns Hopkins is Darby looked like he saw it. He reacted to it, he got a stick over there, and it did ring just off the pipe. Fairman, who had five on Saturday, does not have a tally tonight. Bernhardt does, he has the hat trick. Draws a couple defenders. Plays it for Snyder, that bouncer goes wide. Bernhardt collects. Hopkins is not playing. When Bernhardt gets the ball, they're sliding immediately, making him a passer. Hune still attached to Fairman. Off the question mark, here comes a double. Move it quickly, Wisnowskis. Then DeMeo fires. Darby eats it up. Big rebound, boost ahead. And it should be Rapine able to clear. 9-7, Hopkins with a little bit more than five minutes to go. Nasty worm burner by DeMeo. Nice save by Darby. Foley bails him out. The rebound right there. You can see Darby in his goal crease, pumping his fist a little bit, psyching himself up. That was a huge save for the sophomore. Maryland has won four of the last six meetings between these two teams, including the setback over the weekend. Johns Hopkins trying to improve its overall mark to eight and six should they prevail tonight. O'Connell against DeSimone. DeSimone scanning the Maryland defense, just probing now. Williams is hanging out up top with Forey Smith. Smith fidgets into the alley. The early double comes from Corley. Deliberate approach now for Johns Hopkins. DeSimone swimming against Bubba Fairman. Still with it in his cross. On the flip for Marr. Inside, wide open, great kick save! Dolan with a phenomenal stop on Williams. It gets Johns Hopkins, though, a fresh shot clock. The possession did not change hands. Mark that one down. Save of the game for Danny Dolan. Six foot five, Cole Williams staring you down from three yards out. Kick save and a butte, you kidding me? D. Simone this turn. Bring it up top for Kincannon. He'll jitterbug to the middle. Another feed inside, Smith! He scores! Forey Smith was wide open. Composure and execution. The definition of this possession. It starts with Ryan Darby facing a wicked shot from the outside, courtesy of Anthony DeMeo. He's going to make that stop on this end. As impressive as Patrick Foley goosing it to Jack Rapine. Then you get the ball inside to Cole Williams. Look at that goose. Beautiful job. Dolan's going to make this save with his foot. Keeps it out of harm's way, but on the ensuing possession, Frace 80 shot clock, can count it inside. Williams, excuse me, Forey Smith sticks it high bouncer and Hopkins up by a trio. It is safe to say there are huge bragging rights on the line. In the Big Ten tournament, in the championship, it's only been Maryland and Johns Hopkins 
who've hoisted the trophy overhead. 15, 16, 17, and 18. A split between two artists have their largest lead on the game at 10-7. Coming up on BTN, it's the big show, recapping everything happening in the conference with highlights, interviews, and in-depth analysis. The big show coming up next, right here on BTN. Dave Petromala barking his assignments. How things have changed in this second half. Well, they were getting some shots on Danny Dolan. They weren't the best in terms of the quality looks they've gotten here in the second half. But you got to give Dolan a ton of credit. Nine saves in the first half. He's just been struggling a little bit here. But also Hopkins getting shots right in his kitchen. Huge face off right now. They dig for it. against uh, West Naruski that time. Weston Naruski was in there, 66 in the white. Blue Jays have the possession for Williams. And now, lacrosse ball management becomes even more key. Another huge ground ball by Patrick Foley, number eight in the white and Columbia blue. He has been incredible. Eight ground balls so far for the long pole senior. On defense this season, Hopkins has only held two teams under 10 goals all year, Mount St. Mary's and Michigan. They've limited Maryland to seven at the moment. Racing now for cover, Simone bounced it up there to Williams. Williams, up to 20 yards away from the cooker with Marr. Epstein takes the handoff. Shot clock to 15. Marr peeking around a screen. Brings it back. His pass was low. It gets away from Epstein. It's rolling to the sideline. Still in play. Looked like there was a push call. And it's going to be the Blue Jays who maintain possession. Push, yeah, push was given against Maryland. Fresh 80. The, the Maryland coaching staff were arguing that the shot clock was already expired when the push happened, but to no avail. And Hopkins now is getting Maryland to chase him. Trailing by three. Now you have to gamble. Get the goalie out there trying to create a, a mismatch, a double team somewhere in the corner. And there's a timeout called on the play. Johns Hopkins closing in on potentially a sweep of two against their arch rivals. Ryan Darby, the netminder for the Blue Jays, has come on strong after what looked to be another shaky first quarter plus. It took him a while to make his first save, and we said when, when Hopkins fell behind, Darby had to start making some saves. Well, he has. Holding his position. He's given up rebounds, but that's, if that's the worst of it, meaning he's keeping the ball out of the back of the cage, Hopkins will take that. DeMeo with the high offering. That's his kryptonite, those high bouncers, and Maryland really hasn't come at him with any of those shots tonight. I'm paraphrasing Dave Petromala, who spoke to us uh, recently and said, you know what, Darby is now at a place where he can really help us win a game. That wasn't the case in Dave's estimation earlier in the year, but this netminder has come on and gained confidence, and after you win a game where you make really only credit for two stops, to see him bounce back, that, that tells you how strong he is between the years. I know after a recent loss, I believe it was maybe after the Ohio State game, the defense had a meeting and, and people basically said, if I'm Ryan Darby, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hot at you guys. You know, you're giving up shots right on the doorstep. If you give him an opportunity to make saves, he can make them. I say can because I thought there were a couple saveable shots in the first half of this game that he didn't come up with before. He's played a terrific second half and I think he gets lifted when he sees his defense elevate their game. Patrick Foley, Jack Rapine and company, I think that elevates him. You could not blame longtime Blue Jays fans for loving this facility. Johns Hopkins, nine-time national champion. Three of them were won oh, right here. Yeah. 74, 78, 87. And the big man who's the head coach now on the sideline played for the 87 team that won it all in this facility. That was an improbable national champion. That was a Maryland team that came into that championship weekend undefeated, led by Coach Dick Adell. The Blue Jays knocked them off on Saturday, and then they got the Cornell Big Red on Memorial Day. Tim Goldstein and company to claim an improbable national title for Don Zimmerman. 
Coach Tillman pulling out all the stops. His team needs a turnover here. Towards the empty cage, it's scooped to the goal. Joey Epstein sets the freshman goal scoring record for the Blue Jays and gives him a four goal advantage. Out of the timeout, you double. And this is one of the hardest things to do in lacrosse. Split a double team with two long sticks. Epstein does it, has the empty net, has the green light to shoot it, slips it in. And wow, Johns Hopkins up by four goals. Epstein, who was the Big Ten Player of the Week the last week of the regular season. Four plus two equals six against Maryland back over the weekend. He's three and two tonight as he sets that freshman record at Johns Hopkins. Asking Terry Reardon to move down one slot. Johns Hopkins has the 11-7 advantage. Maryland in black with a ball with 140 to go. This pass here on the end line is going to get away. A miscue for Maryland. And Johns Hopkins is closing in now on what would be a showdown with Penn State. Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Just a couple weeks removed from Penn State blasting them 20-9. to And yeah, it looks like we're going to have a rematch on Saturday. What adjustments will the Hopkins defense make? Grant Amit, Matt O'Keefe, and then, of course, Penn State. This revitalized offense, Cole Williams, Joey Epstein, how are you going to defend them? Another dive to the empty net. Williams cashes in. It's a dozen for the Blue Jays. What a remarkable turnaround from 6-2 Maryland at the half. Holding the Terps to one goal and putting up 10 of your own. Again, another split of the double team. A goal for Cole Williams. I think coming into this game, you could say that the Big Ten was more than likely a two-bid conference for the NCAA tournament with Penn State and Maryland. Hopkins was inner bubble coming into this game. I think they might have, have just played their way into the NCAAs with this victory here tonight. Blue Jays, Williams, another handful of points for him. Johns Hopkins, the only program in the nation with an all-time winning record against Maryland. They are 67 seconds away from sweeping a pair in six days from the Terps. Maryland gets the draw. Shockey doing the honors. Bernhardt moves it quickly. Under a minute to go. With a deficit five out of nowhere. Johns Hopkins has done it again with a great closing kick. Now you got to ask the question, is Maryland played itself out of a potential home game in the first round of the NCAA tournament? I still think their body work is very strong, but we'll have to wait and see. Maryland's going to fall to 11-4 and four in 34 seconds. The Johns Hopkins Blue Jays will move on to a championship game finale against number one ranked Penn State Saturday 7 p.m. Eastern you can see that right here on BTN with 24 ticks remaining coach Petromala on the prowl as usual on that sideline extremely pleased with the turn of events in the second half Snyder with a flag down is Nauskas and another flag down as he pumped it wide of the goal. Joey Epstein throwing an unnecessary check at Snyder and then he is going to run him down after he crosses the midfield line. This is after he swung and got a penalty for offsides. Epstein in attackman taking some liberties with Will Snyder. That's only going to ratchet up this rivalry that much more. The officials trying to keep the peace. With practically no time left on the clock. Dejected look on the face of John Tillman. His Terrapin's about to fall once more. Unnecessary roughness, two minutes, that's full time. As this game winds to its close, 
That will do it. Ryan Darby and the Blue Jays jubilant with a 12-7 decision. Sets up a Big Ten Tournament Championship. Penn State versus Johns Hopkins. Beats Maryland by the final count of 12-7. For Mark Dixon, for all the men and women in our crew,